Good morning. My name is Wally Roderick, and I'd like to thank you for coming this morning to hear my talk about traditional marriage and why Christians need to be more vocal about their position on what constitutes a marriage. Imagine you wake up tomorrow and you hear on the newscast that all 50 states have legalized gay marriage. The joining of any two people is now considered a legal and binding marriage. How would that decision affect your life and the lives of your friends? If any two people can get married, regardless of their gender, then all the lines between the sexes become blurred, if not wiped out completely. Why would we want to teach, or why would the world consider teaching modesty or morality if there are no differences between a man and a woman? However, the Bible teaches something entirely different. The Bible teaches that a man and a woman joined together in marriage are the best representation of the image of God. What will gay marriage do to that image? A little bit about my past. I've got a degree in theology. I've studied the Bible for many years. I've pastored a couple of small churches. And just as important, I've been married for 33 years to my beautiful wife, Jean, and we have raised three children. So I have hands-on experience of what it's like to be married to the opposite sex and to have viewed how life with the opposite sex works and to know that that is how God wants it to be. So if we believe that marriage is the joining together of a man and a woman in the eyes of God for life, for the purpose of ruling the world, or ruling over the world, if you will, and for raising children. If we believe this, we need to take a firm stance against government intrusion into our beliefs and trying to rule that marriage can be anything other than that of a man and a woman. I have three points I'd like to make today. The Bible states the first couple were male and female. And they were made in God's image for the purpose of ruling the, earth, uh, the world and populating the earth. And I'm going to read real quickly, gen real qu quickly Genesis 1, 26-28. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky, over the cattle and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him, male and female. He created them. Gay marriage is in direct opposition to that, uh, that purpose of God. And we can see that in the New Testament in Romans 1, verses 26 and 27. For this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions. For their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. And in the same way also, the men abandoned the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire toward one another. Men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. My second point is that against this position, historically, the world has always held that traditional marriage is between a man and a woman. Even as far back as Plato and Aristotle, Plato held the view. It's hard to believe that they were having a philosophical discussion back then, but they were. But Plato held the view that traditional marriage as we see it uh, was the correct view. The first assault against marriage in this country actually comes as late as 1972. And that was in a case, Einstadt versus Baird. And the case was not a, a case for or against gay marriage, but it was the insidious way that this argument is held. Okay, This case decided that contraceptives could be used by unmarried people. Prior to that, only married people could, use, could buy contraceptives. Because sex was only considered, considered allowable and viable in the context of a marriage between a man and a woman. So that's what we see happening as of 1972. And from there we've seen the downward slide. My third point is Christians need to be vocal about their stand for traditional biblical marriage. How can we do that? The first and obvious way is vote for Christian leaders when possible. Make sure their views are in line with what the Bible teaches. The second thing is be aware that though they say they're Christian, uh, they may not be. And again, we, we find that out by, by looking at what they've said, what they've voted on. Our president 
President Obama stated emphatically he was a Christian, but in fact is a pro-gay supporter and a, against traditional marriage. Conclusion, know what's at stake. In this battle, the very foundations of the created order are being challenged when they challenge traditional marriage. What we need to do is we need to vote. We need to be vocal in our PTAs, our Boy Scout and Girl Scout meetings, and any of our other civic organizations when we have the opportunity. Make your voice heard. You are for God-given traditional marriage. And I want to thank you.